Senator John Kennedy joins us now. Senator Kennedy, good morning to you. Perhaps you can answer that question. Will we see both sides come together and put something before the president that he's willing to sign? I uh, don't know yet, of course. Um, I wouldn't bet my house on it. And if I were betting your house, Sandra, I'd probably say maybe. <laughs> um, we've got to see what the proposals are first. The president's opinion matters. I met with Bill Barr yesterday. I think the White House sent him up here because most people in the Senate have great respect for him. They're looking at, though they haven't finally decided, they're looking at uh, expanded background checks. Look, there, there, there are two groups of people behind these bills. There, there's a group of people that I think in good faith honestly believe that uh, further curtailing our Second Amendment rights will enhance public safety. But there's another group that just hates the Second Amendment. And I want to thank uh, Congressman Beto O'Rourke for, for being, uh, being honest. I mean, his honesty was re refreshing. And, 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 by that, and by that, Senator, you're referencing uh, him doubling down on his controversial stance that he's willing to confiscate guns. Here, here's the, well, yeah, the former congressman yes. in his own words. Let's get you to react to this. Here's Beto O'Rourke. Sure. Are you, in fact, in favor of gun confiscation? Yes, when it comes to AR-15s and AK-47s, weapons designed for use on a military battlefield. Senator Kennedy. Uh, I want to thank uh, the, the congressman for being honest, because that I don't I don't agree with him. Beto's copy of the Bill of Rights goes from one to three. Mine, mine includes the Second Amendment. But there are, are a whole host of people here in Washington, D.C., not all of my Democratic friends, but many of my Democratic friends, they don't believe in the Second Amendment. They would be happy to confiscate America's guns. And if you don't, if you don't believe that, then you probably also still believe in Bigfoot. I mean, it's a fact, and everybody up here knows it. Senator, what are you willing to support? Um, I don't, nothing yet. I told Bill Barr yesterday, I'm willing to read the bills and study them carefully, but the burden of proof is on people who want to further curtail our Second Amendment rights. The Bill of Rights isn't an a la carte menu, Sandra. The Second Amendment is just as important as the Fourth and the First, and, and I've made my position very clear. I believe love is the answer, but I own a handgun just in case. I own several. I own shotguns. That's my right as an American. And we have well over 100 million law-abiding Americans uh, that, that, that it is being proposed their rights should be curtailed. I want to see causal scientific evidence that that is going to make this country safer and reduce mass shootings. I don't want speculation. I don't want dorm room ideas. I, I want the proponents to demonstrate that to me. So because it, we're talking about a constitutional right here. So is it safe to say that you're waiting to hear from the president and what he's willing to support before you'll go public with your own well, support of a of Well, I want, to see, I, want to see the, I want to see the president's bill, and I want to see the bills put before us. And, and uh, as usual, I'll probably find what the president has to say to be persuasive. But I want to make it very, very clear. It's not dispositive for me. Uh, if the president puts a bill uh, on, the, on the, the floor that I think curtails or hurts people's constitutional rights without substantially enhancing public safety, uh-uh. I'm not, that's a bridge too far for me. I'm not, I mean, I'm gonna fight for our constitution. All right, I want to move on to the latest with this New York Times piece that was ultimately yeah. changed or those facts that were omitted by the editors, uh, according to the paper, were added back in. This is from the latest round of TV interviews from the authors of that piece saying why they ultimately did not meet with Kavanaugh himself. Several people ask, did you speak to Justice Kavanaugh? We were on our way to Washington to speak to him. We had finally kind of arranged for an interview. Ultimately, we could not agree on terms that we felt comfortable with. He wanted us to uh, say we hadn't spoken to him. I want to get your reaction to that, Senator. I don't mean any disrespect, Sandra, but I don't think our reporters here have much credibility left. Look, I don't know what happened. But it looks to me like it was either bias or just bad journalism. Now, some of my Democratic friends, again, not all of them, they jumped on this. They, they want to impeach 
Judge Kavanaugh. They won't impeach everybody. They won't impeach President Trump. They won't impeach Justice Kavanaugh. I think next they're going to try to impeach Screech, the, uh, the, the bald eagle mascot for the Washington Nationals. I, I mean, people who disagree with the result of the democratic system here are trying to smash the system. And I understand they're disappointed that President Trump is the president. It's called democracy. They'll get, a, they'll get to vote again in a year and a half, but in the meantime, they need to, to fill out a hurt feelings report and let us move on here and try to run government. Are you suggesting there should be any further accountability based on what happened? And I, and I know you're taking on the, the journalists, the, the reporters, or the authors of that piece, but they placed the blame squarely on the editors for omitting those, those key facts. Like I say, I don't know what happened. I just think most Americans, not the crank wings, but most Americans are looking at this and going, well, it was one of two things. It was either bias or it was bad journalism. And either way, uh, we're, we're going to ignore it. Senator Kennedy, always great to have you on. Come back soon. Thank you. Thank you.